do it, then I'm open to that too. Cool. I just got my screen recording going and, and an audio recording going. So it's not going to be perfect, okay. but it, it should work. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Ah, thanks, Willie. Of course. All right, take okay. us away. Yeah, so uh, intentions. Oh, no, lower light's still not working. Uh, my intentions are to have a really easy call uh, and fun. Uh, I've never led a Miro call, so uh, if anyone has experience with Miro, we'll probably lean on your uh, guidance on what buttons to click, sort of thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I hope that we can just take what we Willie already put down in the Give It to Canvas short, port it over to Miro, and then deep dive into here, maybe divide and conquer some pieces. Once we, once we understand the, the core pieces that we've already uh, kind of looked at and edited those, then have actually a kind of a divide and conquer and then come back uh, section is kind of my, my thoughts on this. And then uh, I'm not, I'm only distracted by the fact that I need to figure out how to get Lorelai in on this. <laughs> but I, I, I will pass it to Willie. Thanks, Griff. <laughs> Uh, super excited for this call today. Uh, my main intention is to to go through that doc and, and to brainstorm with all of you. So I put some thoughts down, um, but one of my core principles that I hold dearly about about Giveth and that I've been thinking about since you know for the past ten years is um, that a platform like this, you know, it should be it should be run by the crowd um, and it shouldn't be run by any individual or any central authority. And uh, I think that. Uh, so I'm just one person in the crowd, so I've got ideas, but the whole idea is that the, you know whoever has the best ideas, those ideas should rise to the top, and uh, and it should be you know a decentralized community that that runs this platform for saving the world. So so I've got some ideas in there, but I want to hear all your ideas and hopefully can align on a pretty cool vision for for a DAO today. Um, distractions. I am. This is the less least distraction I've been in a long time. Uh, I was up to like midnight last night pushing as usual, to just to hit this final deadline. We've had a lot of deadlines lately at Shapeshift to get this mobile app out. And uh, of course, like last second, we finally crushed it. Um, and so this, we got a four-day weekend, and I'm like going fully off the grid tomorrow and looking forward to, to finally getting a break from what's been like a whole month of just like nonstop, all day grinding. So looking forward to having some more free time to work on Give It going forward. And I will pass it to James. Uh, yeah, it's super excited to be here. It's my first uh, DAO canvas, my first mirror board, uh, my first lots of things. So I have the <laughs> enthusiastic, excited curiosity of a child. And um, yeah, I mean, I love Giveth, as I keep saying, and I'm super excited to see how how we will do this and what we will come up with. I mean, I feel like even just the idea of a decentralized giving platform is so uncharted territory even even at this stage. So, I mean, the whole thing is just super exciting. So, yeah, I, I do my best to contribute and I do my best to uh, to learn and share. Yeah. And I will pass it over to Marco. Here, before Marco goes, I just say, I, I figured out I was in the wrong username. And so now I might have more powers to oh, do cool. like record and stuff. Uh, I'll check it out. But uh, sorry, sorry, Lorelai and, uh, and Felipe. We're just doing intentions and distractions. Okay, sorry, Marco. No, no worries, no worries. Uh, so intentions, uh, yeah, uh, just to, to participate and be part of uh, you know shaping this Give It Out for the first time uh, to learn about all this uh, what you guys have uh, created so far. Uh, to get my hands on the DAO Canvas once again, uh, to um, refresh my memory, uh, how it went previously. I think it was a year and a half for the last time I touched the DAO Canvas. Uh, have some fun in Miro. Um, that's for the intentions, distractions. Uh, my daughters are having exercises doing that right now in another room, so family, and, but other than that, uh, all good. And I'll pass it on to Lorelai. Hey, thanks, Marco. Um, and thanks for letting me in, finally, Chris. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, um, I just wanted to come because um, I want to know what, like, I want to see the flow of Dow Canvas and how that's used. I'm going to teach a workshop next, uh, in a couple of weeks on, like, cultural builds for, um, for orgs like this. And I realized, wow, great opportunity to, like, watch you guys um, and how you go through the process of it. 
So I'll, I'll probably mostly just be observing, maybe doing a little other work on the side, but um, I wanted to, uh, to absorb this stuff. And I assume, Felipe, you haven't had a chance to check in yet either. Can I pass it to you? Can you hear me? Is this working? Good. Yep. Hi, guys. Yay, I just airdropped into here. Um, Virif told me in some of our like chatting around that there was going to be a workshop and I offered to help. Uh, intentions, I guess, uh, to listen, to be useful, to kind of uh, learn from you and how you understand the canvas. This is a new version, Marco, from the one you had an experience mm -hmm. with. Um, <clears throat> Unless you came to the workshop in DevCon, which I don't remember you because I usually <clears> remember you. But I'm so happy because you were one of the first like friendly faces from the Web3 when I was just beginning. And we've seen each other in so many countries and so many times. And I always like one day I'm going to be as strong, as lean, as beautiful and as smiley as that guy. <laughs> and I'm still working hard to achieve it. Um, I'm also really happy to be seeing Griff and Lorelei. Last time we were together physically, I was in a very bad place. I have a super um, immense talent of like getting into the weeds of like life and then getting out of it. And I hope, I, I'm so happy that these two talents, like they match each other uh, enough. Um, and that's it. Uh, I think distractions is the fact that Joel from Three Blocks, which is a great friend, he's walking around my garden and, and I'm also tending to him because he's a bit stressed out. Um, some energy and the other distraction is that around eight o'clock another friend is going to arrive and I want to spend some time with her too. But I hope I can be of use. Um, that's 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 it. And nice to meet you, James and Willie, that we haven't met in person yet. And Amin, who doesn't have video, but it's looking quite serious and focused on that picture. <laughs> yeah, I think Amin's the the last one to go. Hi everyone, Th again, thanks for having me. It's my first experience with Dao. Uh, so I feel the audience. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Nice. So uh, I think the best place to start is actually in this Google Doc. Uh, I put, put the Google Doc in the chat and uh, just kind of we can just review this, uh, and if you guys, the real goal here is that to spend maybe like five or up to seven minutes reading this document and adding a few things that you think are important, uh, answering these questions if you think something's important, and that will just make sure that we're all on the same page. Hey, Javi. Uh, well, actually, well, I guess we'll start with letting. Uh, Horace or Hadi introduce himself. Hadi, are you here? Yeah. Oh, Hadi's muted. But uh, while, while we're waiting for Hadi, dive into the Give It To Google Doc. We'll have just like five, seven minute reading this thing. Uh, this is the idea of the Give It 2.0 DAO that Willie and I and Elon, uh, we threw some stuff in there, but uh, maybe you guys will have some input uh, after. But it's, I think it's really important that we all align on the general topic and then build off of that.
so I see that you guys kind of already went through the canvas in a linear fashion. This is going to go good. Oh, hey, honey. Hello. Sorry. No worries. Hey, come on in. Uh, and if you if you want to introduce yourself and just give uh, intentions for the call and any distractions that you have. Maybe not. Oh, Javi's definitely distracted. I see that I gave you guys the a copy of the consensus one where they did the evil DAO. It's going to yeah. be a nice contract. So I would invite us to work on group four, if you guys don't mind, because it's empty and clear. Ah, no, okay. you already worked on group one. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ignore, ignore me. Ignore yeah, me. I, I just pasted some stuff uh, from this document to group. I'm, yeah, because the, the, the document sort of follows the structure of the canvas already, so it's great. Yeah, Elon was really nice and made this uh, for us to kind of collaborate on it before we started. It's really nice. Uh, and when you guys uh, tell me if you guys are ready to uh, move on to the next step, that's really cool. I'm I'm going to open this on my iPad and sit on that couch all the way in the back. Nice. But hey, you can still hear me. Felipe, any advice on the best way to go about this? Should we step divide and conquer, or should we <laughs> stay together for part of it? So yeah, I like I like divide and conquer a lot. You, you attended one workshop, so you've seen the explanation. I also made a little video that's here on the top side um, that explains sort of this mentality of like when to convene and when to divide and conquer. Um, so you can watch and, and just listen in your headphones and you won't bother anybody. It's right here embedded, like here, if you can see my mouse. Um, but basically how I do the canvas, which is not a rule, but it's the way I like to go. I start with the controller and I fill in all the blue highlighted fields first. And then I do, go, I do a spiral round. I go up to community because community is on top and I think this group will agree with me. <laughs> and then I spiral clockwise. So governance, stakeholders, and actors filling only the blue fields and do this in a collaborative way, which means achieving consensus and discussing it. And then once we have these blue fields kind of figured out as a group, dividing and conquering gets a lot safer because there is a alignment and consensus in the basis like of what we're trying to achieve. Um, so as a rule of thumb, be conflict DJs. If you're feeling that too much debate is happening and not a lot of action, just be the black knight and just start filling things in. And then if it's much more likely that we will agree than that we will disagree because of the shared story of the group. So I feel it's um, mostly safe to, to move on. And if you feel, for example, that your idea is um, sort of like possible a possible problem just color it red or something and that might help people pay attention to it and huh. yeah and and in the end playing with the digital canvas has proven more rewarding than doing it in physical life which was super scary for me 
but um, the fact that people can just write like in their own comfortable space has been like super cool. And if you're tired, you can just lurk, you know, it's super, it's super easy going. And the fact that we already have this document from, from Elon helps a bunch, you know? Cool. Well then, uh, then it sounds like we can maybe dive in and uh, divide and conquer to start. Uh, we have some of this stuff already kind of pieced together. Uh, the one thing that I would like to maybe do together is brainstorm names for this DAO. Uh, and then does anyone have it? And then we, and then maybe we split up and each take a piece and go for it. Uh, does anyone have any favorite names? I like Giveth. And, and I was thinking about, um, about it just this morning and I was thinking maybe the Giveth Foundation as we Ooh. as we structure it and with the idea that it's going to be funding the development it looks like at the give it that give it foundation and potentially could be a 501c3 uh, foundation at, at the dow controls anybody else have any uh, brainstorm names that they want to throw out there it's a, definitely a lunar time I would love to watch or listen to someone just riff about this DAO as if it already existed. Like maybe let's just do a like imagination exercise. Maybe Lorelai. Um, oh, probably like Willie. The DAO, the, or Willie, I don't know. I don't know Willie yet. But like let's say the DAO existed for eight and a half months. And then you're just telling the story of what happened. And this would be a cool exercise, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll take a stab at it, and uh, I want to hear other other ideas too, because I think a big part of today is kind of aligning on on what that what the vision is for the DAO in eight months, and in five years, and in ten years. So, when I and I like to think about the, the long term vision. Um, so, I envision uh, a DAO that incentivizes and facilitates problem solving, and and does it in a way where anyone can come donate to causes, anyone can come raise causes, anyone can contribute to causes. But basically, um, it's an alternative to the traditional nonprofit industry um, that I think has some issues with with the incentives and stuff. And I think there's a big opportunity for us to improve that. So, on cause, people can come donate to, uh, to solutions or to to different causes or to even just the top level, just donate to to saving the world. And uh, the funds get allocated to to the top projects. And so. Right now, we're planning on doing that with quadratic funding so that donations from the top level or from the cause level get matched with donations to the project level. Um, and that's a way to ensure that you know, the, top, the top solutions are getting funding, but it also makes it easy for somebody who, who just wants to give. They don't want to go do the research and, and figure out um, which of these projects to fund. They just want to donate and know that their funds are going to the, to the best cause um, or the best project for, for the cause they care about. And I think there's a big opportunity to do this in a social way. So I envision it really as a social network um, where people can come contribute in every way. So if they do want to get more involved, they can go down to the project level. They can volunteer for one of these projects. They can post ideas for projects. They can raise money for their own project. Um, and all of this is social. So people can, can show the contributions they're having. It's transparent so you can see where every dollar goes. And, a hunt, and a, a, something that I really care about is you know, enabling 100% of every dollar donated to go directly to those causes. And um, the, the way we could earn revenue from that is from the interest. So right now, $440 billion uh, gets donated to nonprofits just in the US alone each year, which is a crazy large number. And, and so few problems really get solved. Um, right now, I think a lot of these nonprofits are they're more incentivized to, to save one frog at a time, so to speak, than to actually solve these, these core problems. Um, because if they do solve these problems, then everyone working at the nonprofit goes out of business, um, or they lose their job. And, we all know how hard solving these problems are, especially these are some of the biggest problems in the world that, that need to be tackled. Um, and right now we're, we're relying on individual nonprofits um, to, to solve these problems and they're competing with each other for funding. They're not really incentivized. And um, lo and behold, we don't see very many problems ever, ever get solved. So instead what I'd like to see is, is people being rewarded for their contributions. So whether you're, whether you're donating, whether you're coming up with an idea, whether you're, you're volunteering, I think there's an opportunity for us to reward people with a token. And uh, the way that we can uh, generate revenue and, and, and facilitate this is that 
for every dollar that gets donated, 100% goes to the solution. But in the meantime, between the dollar getting donated and the dollar getting actually allocated, it's earning interest um, and it's it's generating revenue that can be used to to buy back tokens and then uh, you know reward users again with those tokens for their contributions to the platform. So that's I've said a lot, um, and that's pretty high level. But does that make sense? Are we tracking? Do you guys agree with well, that? And, yeah. And where does this specific DAO come into that mix? So. Obviously, a platform like this. When I first started thinking about this platform, and I think Griff, you had the same experience. You know, this was you know ten years ago before before blockchain was was big, and um, I honestly imagined it as like a, a centralized, um, you know, an altruistic, benevolent uh, dictatorship type platform, basically. Where because you know that was the only concept that I really understood. So then started learning about blockchain and the ability to that you could actually do this in a decentralized way, and it made so much sense. Um, I think a platform like this absolutely should be owned by the, by the people, by the community. Uh, as opposed to one centralized organization that you have to trust is, gonna, is going to do the right thing and is incentivized often to be corrupt and to, and to abuse that trust. So um, the DAO, today we're going to talk about what that, what that DAO actually looks like. Um, in the future, I mean, as, as the, you know, uh, blockchain technology improves and becomes more scalable, I, I do imagine um, like a DAO that is, is easy to participate with as, as Twitter or as Reddit, where you just create an account and it feels like Web2. But at the end of the day, you are every one of your actions and every like you get and every upvote you get gives you more uh, rep in the DAO and it makes your votes more heavily weighted. And each of these, you know, as things become more scalable, I think a lot of this could could exist on chain, um, but we're not quite there yet. So the initial thing that I think make, makes a lot of sense and it looks like we're aligning on that and we should talk about that today, but is just uh, managing the development of this and. and uh, Incentivizing people to develop it and, and brainstorming, you know, crowdsourcing the design in the in the development of this of this uh, platform. So, is the goal of this DAO that we're talking about today to be really like no barriers to entry, like really widespread? It's basically like everyone can be a part of it just by like having an account, but they just take time to build up into the ranks of being really influential. So. I would like to get there for sure. For this initial DAO, I think it's more about the the, the, de the development of this initial thing and and making sure that we're not you know starting off by um, to having one person or a small group decide uh, what this should look like. I, I do want it to at least be accessible for people to come say, here's here's how I think it should work, and here's my idea for a future, and hey, I can help build this, and um, and rewarding people for those contributions. It's kind of what I'm thinking, but I'm, I'm super open-minded, and this is the first DAO that I've been a part of, um, so I'm, I'm learning along as we go. Okay, so like on a really simple level, um, this like like functionally, what this needs to be able to accomplish is like holding access to like effectively a multi-signature wallet that's going to approve payments to people who are doving on Gibbets 2.0, right? Like that's the DAO's, this DAO's first task, am I right? Yes, exactly. Like proposing and, and, and uh, creating bounties and rewarding the contributors who, who fulfill those proposals for development. Okay, cool. Um, so, I mean, I, uh, yeah, that's good clarification for me. I think it's, it's fine to focus on this as, as, as a more, yeah, as a more focused and like smaller membership DAO at first too. Like great to have the, the wider dreams of like, um, you know, no barriers to access and such. But, um, but I guess I definitely would like to see evolve through this DAO canvas process. Like what are the entry points to this DAO? Cause it sounds like it's gonna be very, you know, in the early stages, it's going to need to attract people that have a high level of commitment um, to just being engaged and being able to make good decisions and actually be there and vote on fund spending. Um, and also like have, a, you know, some expertise and uh, qualification and experience with the community to do so. So I don't know, I guess that makes me want to go up to this community section here. Um, I don't know, Felipe. I feel like I want some more instruction here. Like, we're supposed to. I'm here. I'm here. I'm just, just kind of like 
go for it on this on this mirror but i yeah <laughs> no i'm i'm here for you it's just cuz we're not physically together but yeah i, I think I, I think i think the big piece is that we want to make sure that we hit all of the dotted lines everything that's in a dotted line we want to make sure that we cover first see the the blue dotted lines around some boxes so uh maybe we can just let's just go out and divide and conquer and we can start picking uh who wants to start where uh but i can any... just i can just say a bunch of stuff like i can just, just like say stuff while you guys are going lorelei for example for the community one um it gets a lot easier to to build the the rest of this sheet if we take a moment to understand the back story right yeah um maybe maybe for us in this call it's not necessarily to write it down because we kind of know like i interviewed griff for the mess adoption podcast like i i know the story everybody knows the story but if from the story we can distill the the like three expected principles and when i mean principles i mean like ideology um that is something that once we agree about we don't often talk about but then back tracing and really taking a time to analyze it like the, for example the idea that giving is good right Give, giving is profitable in in some sense um it's an important idea for giver uh, and this that this profitability has to be visible right so boom there's two principles right there i guess i don't know but just making sure you align this because when you do build uh a, a strategy for like what are the communication platforms what are the rhythms and rituals of this community where do people like um accumulate and source knowledge from like we have to exercise this empathy like when the when, if i'm a newcomer the easier it is for me to understand what this this crew is about to understand if this is like the people i've been looking for for the last 10 years or no i just don't want to hang out with this crowd this the, the capacity of finding this out real quick is super good and this has implications like even in what companies you choose to work with like is all this stuff going to be on google or is that like not okay you know so this is kind of the reflection on this stage and then it has also a, a practical side of like um <clears throat> who is responsible for the implementation of this like tomorrow and who's responsible for the maintenance of this on a weekly basis so this is the thing and then there's a little forgotten field here at the bottom like bottom corner which is the sunset clause like how does a user leave especially for this first communities this is super important like what is going too far you know so in, in the austrian principle thing yeah like okay so you have these these sanctions these graded sanctions great but what is the like what is the line that shall not be crossed and how do we like get someone to leave i i want to highlight this one because i've been part of so many groups and i'm still part of one of them that because of one like malicious actor and he's not sometimes not even malicious in purpose or whatever you know this you like even if i just change shift the subject to this sort of topic everybody kind of feels it in their muscles you know um having a clear sunsetting strategy can be super useful and it's a hard conversation to have so i just wanted to like kind of like this for a second philip is yeah, this like normal. this is like getting fired from the dow yeah yeah and it's usually because you're annoying not because you're, you know like there's it, it's hard but it's 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 hard we don't talk no, about it dude totally lorelei and i we lorelei specifically was all about that forgiveth one we actually had like a very deep heart to heart one so i'm like we got to find a way to kick people out you know like it's a thing yeah just like a regular organization okay. yeah so can we can we just play a game real quick then like 5 minutes tops you guys ever played like uh those fortunately unfortunately games where it's like a story game you basically start with uh you know one person starts well once upon a time this happened and then and then someone else just picks up and adds the next sentence to it so just just vocally right now we can try this and all um to to just crowdsource the back story here so i'll start with mine once upon a time the world became very disappointed with how opaque charity was and then and then you got to pass it to someone. Oh, do I have to pass it to someone? Well, 
I think that'd be better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's up to you. And then Chris. <laughs> and then uh, give it uh, give it one was started, and give it one tried to make major things happen, uh, but the blockchain wasn't ready. Uh, things weren't really ready, and in the end, it wasn't sustainable. And it 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 uh, it created a a DAP, uh, but that DAP never really took off, or it hasn't really taken off. I'll pass it to me. <laughs> oh, is Amin there? Amin? Yes. So now you get to continue my story. I was saying that the give it dap hadn't really taken off at that point. Uh, yeah, uh, we want to talk. Actually, I when I came to uh, give it one, it has it was bleeding. Uh, that the application wasn't maintained uh, has not been ma uh, ma maintained very well for a long time, and it was patched with various codes. That, was not compatible with other sites, and hopefully after uh, several months, we are in a point that we can say that okay, uh, it's work, it should work, and uh, we can say that it's not beta anymore. It can be released as a, uh, a stable application. Yeah, I pass it to pass it to Griff again. Thank you. <laughs> to me. Uh, well, maybe but, uh, maybe well, we go. At the I same can... time, and then Willie gets to say his part. <laughs> okay. Okay. At the same time, what was going on, Willie? At the same time, on the you know other side of the globe, um, a young college student, um, he was working on his own tech startup, and he wanted to um, you know take a percentage of profits and, and donate it to charities. And then he had the same realization that charities kind of suck, um, and there's there's got to be a better way. And um, so he spent the next six years working on that first startup and another startup, um, both of which were fortunate to get acquired and ended up um, at, at yet another startup um, where he's still been heads down. But finally, this past year at ETH Denver, he said, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to spend, spend this weekend at this hackathon and finally just get an MVP out and uh, and see what the world thinks about this, this idea that I think about every weekend, every night I lie in bed and. Um, and, and we did it. We built an MVP, and we presented it, and, uh, and the world agreed that this needs to exist. Um, and I met up with Griff, we joined forces, and we um, started chatting and realized, holy shit, we have the, the same vision, um, let's, let's do this. Um, and, and Give It Two was born. And I will pass it to James. <laughs> uh, okay. So at the same time, is it? <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of getting up to uh, present day here, so so we might yeah. be uh, solid on our backstory, unless you have something that you want to add. Um, I, I would just say that, like, um, yeah, a year ago, I was at the Odyssey Hackathon on the same track as Giveth, and uh, met Griff for the first time, who greeted me by hugging me, which was an immediate indication of who I was dealing with. and. Um, but even before that, you know, I'd already thought to myself I would love to go to the Odyssey with Giveth. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, in the meantime, the last year, I've just been obsessed with pretty much uh, the same questions and other problems that are all related in this space. And I, I see a lot of things aligning right now. Like, I mean, you know, things like scalability and Ethereum, rebuilding happening. Like everything is moving right now at this moment. Like, and it's not just us, it's all around us, lots of this. So I'm, yeah, I mean, the time is now. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's very mm. exciting. This is such and a good I story. I'm, I'm getting chills. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously. There's nothing uh, more unstoppable than an idea whose time has come and the technology is there, the people are there. So I don't know how to pass this off or who to pass this on it's to. It's fine. I think, help. <laughs> I think we got it. We got our backstory. I just wanted to spend five minutes and now we have that grip. You are muted, by the way. I mean, I would love to, if Marco's got some backstory here too. You know, oh, uh, he does. Yeah, a lot. So. <laughs> You guys do? I can't I just check my room. Okay. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Not the greatest. Can you hear me? A little bit, yeah. Is it okay now? Yeah, it's okay. We can hear you better than we can see you. 
All right, all right, cool. So, well, at the same time, uh, <laughs> at the same time, there was a guy who actually, uh, you know, worked on the Give It uh, 1.0 and saw this amazing project and was so eager to push it to, you know, to to the to the public, not just people in the crypto space, but you know, to to the wider. Um, wider group of people and and was actually really sad to see how, how we're not progressing and how we're, we're stuck we're hitting the wall uh, we don't have enough resources and so on and so forth and you know then eventually um you know we we kind of put the give it in the hibernation mode and which was a really good decision at that point and I was really happy. No, I was satisfied with we've done that because we were not progressing very well. But throughout, like during the the, the next year, I was still thinking about it and knew that we should we should continue our work and that we're actually running out of time. And so, when the Give It 2.0, um, when I found about it, uh, and I was super happy that that I could join again and. Uh, be part of this group and and build uh, build something and launch it as soon as possible. Okay. <laughs> uh, do I need to pass it? No, no I, I'm good. I I, I mean uh, I would love for Hadi to introduce himself if he ever got the mic thing figured out. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to give a story, Hadi. We just want to say hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I told you, uh, it's too difficult for me, uh, but I uh, do my best to my express my things about blockchain and DAO. Uh, actually, uh, this just uh, lets me to introduce myself. Uh, first, uh, experience or encounter with my this technology uh, blockchain is about three years ago. Uh, and uh, I think that it's a good technology to do something uh, uh, useful for the humanity on uh, this technology. Uh, and uh, actually, I did a lot of uh, try to do something good uh, with this technology, <laughs> but uh, uh, it did not work. It did not work, honestly. Uh, and. Uh, I when I uh, get familiar with Pivot uh, via grief, uh, uh, I think that this is a good uh, uh, experience and this is a good opportunity for me to do something meaningful and something useful for the humanity with this blockchain. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, I can help uh, you uh, on achieving your no, uh, I am a new by a new by a newcomer uh, in Givet community, and uh, uh, I I hope that I catch up everything as soon as possible. Okay, that's it. Thanks, Hadi. And uh, yeah, Hadi, who goes by Horace in a lot of the rooms, is uh, we just he's a memes friend, and he's doing project management for Giveth One, and hopefully Giveth Two as well. So he'll help us keep, stay organized. Um, but yeah, let's let's divide and conquer. I think I'm, I mean I think some of us are already dividing and conquering. Uh, does anyone have a specific page that they really want to tackle? Hmm. I, I figure we start with pages, and uh, whoever wants a page can say I'm doing it, and then uh, I'll take the last one that's that's not there. Um. I think I would really like to see like the new personas filled in a little bit. Are you going to? What is that? Did you want uh, to do the user st stakeholder thing? analysis? I I can't. No, because I don't know enough. I was just going to say I'm kind of drawn to that one. Because uh, I want to draw the pictures of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I'll I'll work on typing into that one, so we say you can. Uh, can make them beautiful. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna take on the that whole page. Yeah, I mean, I'll start on it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, anybody else have a page they want to take on? 
I'm kind of drawn to that stakeholder one too. I can I can work with you on that, Lorelai. Okay, cool. I started I started adding uh, stuff to the community page, so I could continue with that one. Although I maybe I could switch the stakeholders as well and help it along there as well. Okay, yeah. The the, the governance elements one is super important. Super. <laughs> What's not important? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no, but it's one. It's one that there's like more room for having disagreements on. By the way, Felipe, you mentioned that we should be going like from from the controller, going up to the community, and then going to governance. Take or yeah, if you, if you were alone, we we're, we're a swarm. We can be everywhere at once. All right. And then, uh, does anyone want to take on government, cool. government, governance element or actors? Well, the actors one is like the boring one. It's like, what is on chain about all of this that we filled in before? So it can be like, depending on the type of DAO, it can be the hardest or the most obvious one. And I think in this case, it's kind of the most obvious one. Uh, okay. Um, so I think like Griff or Willie, whoever has a certain level of seniority should tackle the governance elements first. Okay, yeah. depend, so there's sort of a, a relationship between the two top, the, the top and the bottom and the sides ones, right? So the governance elements is sort of the collective manifestations of the, the actors, the on-chain actors. And the same thing happens on the community is a collective manifestation of the individual stakeholder. So there's like this distension between us. Okay, well, I'll, I'll take on the government set to start and then uh, we'll see how it goes. Which makes me sound super smart, but it was totally like an accident. And I realized this like one year after I mentioned the I was like, oh shit, there's a relationship here. <laughs> And God thanks Myra. Such a great tool. Yeah. Like I'm literally on my couch watching you guys create. It's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, this could be a good opportunity. If you see any cool opportunities to snap screenshots or anything of everyone working on this, I think it'd be good some good social content potentially. Uh, yeah. I took one screenshot while we were all Are working we on this. this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm fine with my face being shared. <laughs> cool. I figured because we are recording this, by the way, for the latecomers. This is all being recorded. Forgot to mention that after uh, some, of, some of the latecomers joined. Good to know. <laughs> Okay, so what do you guys think about, I know we've talked about this save the world as a tagline for, for Give It To, and it's, it's pretty bold. And uh, is, that, is that too bold? Do we like that? Too bold. Yeah, it's too bold. No, no, no. Uh, we don't want to do that. Somebody's got to do it. Okay, I'll, I'll, it sounds like, the future. <laughs> I can recognize I'm too bold sometimes, so it sounds like we, I need to tone it back a little bit. The future of giving? Is that what you're saying, Marco? The future of giving. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I like and that. Willie, I really appreciated that you uh, you posted somewhere in the doc mutual aid as um, just instead of charity. I think um, uh, maybe it's just my own personal like kink for <laughs> for mutual aid over you know solidarity, not charity. But uh, but yeah, I, I support um, th that kind of language, and I think a lot of people who are I think a lot of people who are tired of the way that old charity traditional charity works are also tired with this like these oversimplified like save the world or like you know making the world a better place like these um phrases that are a little reductive and it's like oh maybe it's too good to be true <laughs> yeah it's a good point if, you, if you're too bold sometimes it has the opposite effect and people it, it mean it's less meaningful than if you just are more um, realistic about what we offer, and maybe one day yeah. we can get there. But yeah, mutual yeah. aid—that's that's a good point. And 
I had actually, I didn't even really know the term mutual aid until um, Danabelle and James on, uh, on one of the calls um, introduced me to it. And I loved it because it's like exactly what I've, you know, I'm, I had I put a term to this concept that I had in my head. Um, and we've really seen a huge increase in mutual aid, I think, with the coronavirus. Like I've, maybe it was just that I was more in tune and recognized it more because now I knew this, this, this term to describe it. But uh, I think we all recognize that there's just been a huge increase in uh, mutual aid. Like traditional nonprofits have really struggled to adapt and to, to, to fight coronavirus. So we've seen all these individuals kind of these uh, pop up, these grassroots projects to, to make masks and give masks or um, to create websites with analytics or community support groups, but it's all very fragmented. So it's like, we're seeing it, I've seen all these spreadsheets of different ways, you, different projects that you can go look at and, and contribute to, but it's very disorganized. So for the MVP of Give It To, that's kind of what we've aligned on is uh, a platform connecting donors to mutual aid projects and, and uh, like a marketplace for mutual aid projects so that, because uh, there really isn't one right now, there's not one place where you can go. And it's in every one of these mutual aid projects, not only do they have to, do all the good, but they have to build their own website and they have to raise their own funding and they shouldn't have to, and they have to set up a 501c3 foundation if they want to accept donations. Um, and it's obviously they shouldn't have to do all that. Um, there's a big opportunity, I think, for us to to solve a lot of those pain points for them and to make it really easy to for a mutual aid project to raise funding. And I think that yeah, I, I really okay. like the I, I really like the phrase like building communities around causes. Like I mean, this is something that really resonates with me, and it's something that I feel compared to like big uh, NGOs and things like this. Like that's kind of like a big value, really. Even like, I mean, I could imagine a world where we actually suck projects out of NGOs and they get posted in Give It somehow or something like this. Do you know what I mean? They can coexist even somehow in a way. And I don't know. I mean, that's a I don't know something like this. You know. It's a good point. And I, I do, I hate on charities a lot, but to your point, there's a lot of really good charities out there. Um, there's some great nonprofits. And so the way I think about it, I completely agree, James. And what I'd like to see is I'd like to see, um, you know, good nonprofits, if this be a way for them to more easily raise funding um, and to build build these communities um, and open it up so that anyone who wants to support their efforts can support their efforts. And so that uh, we don't have a lot of different nonprofits trying to do the exact same thing. You know, we, we consolidate those efforts and, and make them more efficient. Um, and sure. but also making it harder for the bad nonprofits that are absolutely out there um, to, to raise the funding. All right. One of the things that I've noticed in my like NGO career, which was most of my life before blockchain, it might be a Brazilian bias, but even the like the well-intentioned good nonprofits are highly inefficient with funds. It's true. Oftentimes they are. Like my my friends that worked for NGOs, they have like incredibly high salaries for what they did. It was it was weird for me to, to see it. And like and 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 it, it it kind of rewarded networking and sociability more than like getting things done. It was it was it was a, it's a weird crowd. I don't know if it's only in Brazil, but I think you're right, and I think I think a lot of it has to do with just like the fundamental flaws in the in the nonprofit industry, like the the economics, where um, there's not. I really I'm a big believer in the free market. Obviously, there's market failures and stuff if the market's just left to do its own own things without <laughs> some rules. But at the same time, um, there's I, I believe in just the, the three the three ingredients to a free market: information, competition, and transparency. And I think if you have those three things, then you get the invisible hand and you get maximum efficiency and it's, it's the best for um, the end users. Uh, it's it's the, be the best experience. And if you're, but if you're lacking information, competition or transparency, then you don't have that, that free market. So, and there's, if in markets where there, uh, where there's large markets that aren't free, they're lacking information or competition or transparency, there's a huge opportunity to, to bring those values and improve information, improve the competition, improve the transparency. And just by doing that alone, I think it can be disruptive to the, to the industry that does not have that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super weird. It, it's a, it, it is functioning slightly outside like market forces. Um, to me, it's about the direct connection between the doers, the doers and the, the donors, right? Like, I mean, it's the ability to connect even the people who need to receive with the people you can give, right? Like, I mean, it made a lot of sense in the olden days, you know, to put supplies on the boats and ship them down there or something. 
But like if we can just have, put money straight into people's hands, then it's clearly way more efficient. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> the most efficient organization is an efficient is an organization with zero people, or at least one person would be better. You know, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. It's just decentralization, yeah. right? It's just like kind of living, breathing. You know. mm-hmm. Love that. Are you guys seeing these these uh, persona drawings? These are amazing. From Marco and Felipe. Yeah. <laughs> Laura likes the donor, but she cut her hair because uh, it wouldn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that was me. That's funny. I'm giving this uh, this person a very different uh, description, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Julian Assange. I can't donate to traditional channels because I became way too radical for the government to let me have a bank account. But I still want to give to radical causes. <laughs> well, it's not too many people these days that would start a sentence with "I'm Julian Assange," so I give you my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Lorelai, the Julian Assange of herbs. <laughs> oh, there's two stakeholder analysis sheets. It's gonna. Uh, so the, what I should have done, which I didn't, was to lock the, the base sheets, right? Because there's uh, no reason why they should be movable. Yeah. Let me, let me go around doing that. Just All right, this uh, one is locked. Does anyone want to try taking on the actors? I can take a look at that, really Griff. Um, yeah, they're I've always I'm considered really myself an really actor really. at heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Felipe, I'm curious about the uh, how can users leverage participation for individual benefit? Um, do you have any examples from other DAOs that you could give us? Well, I was able to change uh, social classes because of the Genesis DAO. I was able to pay all my bills and uh, doing only creative work that was self-assigned. So that's an example. I was a complete, like, uh, just failed immigrant and then DAOs happened, and I was like, yay, let's do a bunch of stuff. And I paid all my bills for a month, then I got hired by a company. So you can think like the selfish survival needs, like visibility, belonging, money, um, like reputation. Oh, my friend arrived back. I, I love that. And uh, I've always thought that, you know, at scale, talking about the DAO at scale, that you should be able to come earn a living from, contrib- from contributing. And, um, you know, I think that there's all these people who are, you know, potentially unemployed right now, but there should be an opportunity for them to go do good. There's all these people who are donating on one end and there's all these opportunities to do good. And again, if we could connect those and make it easy, I could imagine a place where you could go on, you could go online and you could get jobs uh, that are, you know, social good. Like you could go pick up trash and prove that you picked up a bag of trash and, and get paid for the day. Um, or if you're a developer, you could come build a feature and get paid for it. So that, that helps give a lot of clarity to that. Thank you. Okay, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Um, if you guys have any questions, I would say write them on the side of the canvas here, like somewhere around here. I mean, just it, uh, can I ask a really quick one? Yeah, of course. Uh, what's the it reflect on governance polarities? What's the independent dependent? Like, do these people control the future of the organization? So, if if this now wants to become actually like a corporation, are they free to do it? How would they do it? How free are they? What's the type of pressure in stopping them from changing directions? Or um, because once it's a DAO bid, it can go anywhere. So what are the checks and balances, and what are the possible ways that you can like either either incentivize this type of freedom or sort of hold it from happening? Right? Maybe like let's say that you have a DAO like a Giveth DAO, and then the Catalonia people of the Giveth DAO decide to like raise an army. <laughs> And succeed or something like this, you know. Um, it like for example, the DX DAO has a problem now. Like the DX DAO, DX DAO has a million dollars, right, or more. What are you yeah. gonna do? Yeah, that's it. Uh, gets creepy. Yeah, it's killed many DAOs. Too much money. I'm I'm gonna go figure out what I can help the DX DAO with. And maybe oh, they all need massages. They can go from home to home. Like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of, that's the kind of thing, like basically are they, how free is this, um, organization to 
repurpose itself, right? So that's kind of the, the question. And um, the central, the central is more about like the reputation distribution. Um, if if it is meant that there is very low fluctuation in max and minimum uh, reputation, or if it's meant to have like a certain set of whales that have a lot of power, and then yeah, you you, you get what I mean. Yeah, I get the other two. I, the, I was thinking for this DAO specifically, it's kind of a challenge because it's like, of course we have all the power to take any direction we want with this DAO. We're building a fucking DAO canvas right now. But like, uh, once over time, it's going to become entrenched with the responsibilities that it's given itself. And yeah, maybe it could still become a corporation or something, but it just kind of gets stuck. Yeah, but you can address this with the cultural build as well. Like even even if on chain it still would have the power to do anything, just the fact that you reflected it about this as an initiation group and as a core team, you can actually influence the cultural build. It's something that we don't like to admit, but if you have like vast powers of influencing the type of discussion that kind of flourishes or not, and the kind of people that comes in or not. So as long as you have this like. So eight big, eight initiators kind of aligned on this uh, gives you a higher chance of, of like maintaining your coherence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Totally. No. And then, but then again, when you go think about the actors, you can actually implement some sort of, of limitations. Like, no, no proposal can deploy um, more than five percent of the funds at once. Or if, if it deploys more than 5% of the funds at once, it becomes a critical proposal and it needs 95%. Like, you know, we can design all of these mechanisms on a desk like that that, that would, um, it just needs a little custom code to, to, to work, you know? Is this uh, satisfying? Oh yeah, no, absolutely, dude. I, I it, it sounds legit, like, you know, we can, make sure that we put in our you know principles and values the way that we can change this thing yeah and 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 as a general direction i would say like at a first pass of the canvas you can make it as sci-fi as you want don't 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 worry for a second of what like is technically implementable right now because we need the sci-fi to evolve like the, the DAO space and then you can then make like the compromises later but right now, it's, if you invent a bunch of cool like features that don't exist yet, that's actually ideal because there's people working on developing them. Cool. Sure. That, that helps for sure. So guys, sorry sorry to leave this in the middle. Um, I had some prior engagements, but I think you guys are bright as fuck and you're going to do just fine. Dude, it's amazing to have the inventor of this thing on the call with us. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Felipe. Don't Thank worry. you. Awesome, Candice. Awesome, Felipe. Please. Please collect any like feedback or criticism on how to make this better. There's an open bounty that Griff, Griff, create, a Griff created um, on the give a thought. And if you want to throw in 20 bucks in there for free, um, I'm going to start advertising it soon. I'm just really busy with the agency dial, which I will talk to all of you about really soon. Um, and that's actually, it. Actually, Thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah, you gave a talk about that uh, at Denver, right? Um, not exactly. That was a test dial talk. But then the agency is the evolution of it, and um, it's weirder. It's a bit more esoteric. Uh, there is a creativity training, free training attached to it as an educational experience. I'm definitely going to annoy you about it, Rick, really soon, and get your feedback. Um, the first episode is recorded. All I need is 20 minutes of like you meditating and listening to me say a bunch of weird shit, Alan Watts style, and then get your feedback. Well, it's um, kind of annoying each other with stuff. Uh, I, I'm going to do a, a cultural build workshop for commons or pu public goods focused DAOs at DAO Rush Week. And so we get, I would really love for you to be there because uh, yes. this tool is like such a huge part of cultural build. Awesome. I haven't also, I haven't yet also uh, like enrolled my workshop for DAO Rush Week. I have to do this tomorrow. Guys, Good see you soon. Hey, buddy. Huh? <laughs> it's good today's today. take it. Today's take it. Today I'm going to be a, a happy person. Enjoy the friends. Thanks for coming. Great meeting you today. See, See ya.
How are you guys doing on this? It's a lot. Yeah. It's There's good. a lot there. It's a lot, but I love these canvases because we're getting so much in here, like compared to a business plan or something like that. Like that's a lot and and yeah. and very um, hard to change, very slow to move. So I love, I've done these business canvases and I'm a huge fan of the lean, lean canvas, but first time doing it for a DAO. And it's cool. It's really helped me see the, the similarities just between a, a DAO and a regular business. It's just a DAO is, it's the new, the new form of business and doing it in a distributed way. But it's, there's so many, you know, all the same principles still apply. Yeah, totally. Um, well, by the way, guys, like I'm being totally goofy on a lot of my answers. So like I, if, if any of you are there and they're like, oh, wait, I don't know if I have the authority to write on this, please just like write anything in that you uh, feel makes some sort of sense, even just comic sense. <laughs> and I'm sure it'll be a great uh, draft to work from. Awesome. Did any, has anyone seen anything that they like disagree with or have a different idea for? Or are we all are we all feeling pretty aligned so far? I figure that we'll we'll want to just uh, do that at the end. Okay. This thing. Maybe I don't know. Let's make sure that all the dotted lines are filled in, and then once uh, if no, if someone is like, hey, I can't find something that's in a dotted line to fill in, then let's then let's stop and uh, just go through it. And everyone who answered a question, we can, we can uh, have a little presentation. Love that. That sounds great. And yeah, I guess feel free if you see something you disagree with, feel free to just add another idea next to it, and we can talk about it when we go through everything. I don't see anything I disagree with yet. Yeah. But I realized I was filling something in outside of the dotted lines, so I'm going to go back to the dotted lines. <laughs> Do you guys think we should, if you, if we have a uh, proposal in the DAO and you vote for it and it passes, or you vote against it and it doesn't pass, do you think you should get rewarded um, with rep in the DAO, with more rep? Or do you guys think that, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's how it works, right? That's how it works right now out of the box, is that there's a proposal and you vote yes and it passes, you get rewarded, or if you vote no and it gets rejected, you get rewarded. Or if you vote on the other end, if you vote no and it passes, then you get then you lose some rep. I think that's the the holocratic consensus thing. Yeah, and I'm not, holographic I'm not sure. consensus. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure that we need that in the short term because it's really what's great about that is it allows DAOs to scale. So like you can really have like uh, you know thousands of people in a DAO. But when there's just a few people, you you might not want to disincentivize dissent. Right. Exactly. That's kind of it. Kind of dis disincentivizes dissent, which is not necessarily what we want to do. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just, like, disincentivizes people from participating like, in case it might get shot down. If yeah. it was only positive, I would support that. Like, oh, you if if the proposal gets passed, then you get more cred. But if the proposal doesn't get passed, nothing happens. Yeah. I don't know if I was understanding that correctly. No, yeah, no, that's that's absolutely right. Um, and yeah, I don't know, because that has its own incentives too, right? Because um, then you're just kind of incentivized just to vote yes, and then everyone's voting yes. I, 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 would, I would prefer everyone who votes gets, vote, gets tokens, vote yes or no. Ooh, I like that. Like, just, so, just for participating. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. And so we're not we're not incentivizing any yes or no, just voting. Period. I love that. Yeah, that's cool. At least to start. It's the future of giving. <laughs> it's the yeah. future of giving. Yes. Yeah, it definitely goes with the value of rewarding people who put in work, right? Exactly. One hundred percent. I 
Uh, did we fill out everything from the uh, power board from the canvas? No. The blue dotted lines? Looks like just about. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Should we? I'm, I'm not seeing any. So, of the... so would it have to just go around? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Well, uh, let's start at the controller. Uh, describe the DAO's goals as explicitly as possible. We didn't do a great job at that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 think I, I think I can just take this one, and I'll go with, like, to build the future of giving, more specifically, the give it DAP, which has a lot of, uh, you know, amazing magic underneath it. But the main goal is to design and develop give it 2.0. I like that. I'm for, I'm for that as well. Anyone object? To design and develop, give it the, the new version. Yeah. I mean, it's so the give it 2.0 thing, it is the version 2.0, but it's give it. It's the give it dap. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK. So. Mm -hmm. It looks like we have uh, some of which decisions does the DAO control. Um, and I think, I think Willie, you kind of wrote most of this stuff, right? Yes, for sure. So just so I understand the process here. So for this first one that we just went, went from, describe the DAO's goals as explicitly as possible. Do we decide to design and develop the Giveth 2.0, or do we decide to build the future of giving, more specifically, a new version of the Giveth DAP? I, I guess, oh yeah, let's, let's talk what happens after this call. So after this call, I think that we kind of take this, to, we make it a task to take this and call it done with the notes in there and, and then, you know, may get community feedback. I don't know the best way to get community feedback, but it feels like this becomes sort of like a constitution for the DAO to some extent. Yeah. And it's, it, it's stable. Uh, but changeable, right? A living doc for sure. Yeah, yeah. A living doc for a li living org. Yeah. Cool. So, so we don't need to be picking. We should leave all the notes there, um, or at least after the discussion. We, I don't think we should delete yet. We don't. I okay. mean, if anything, we should take what <clears throat> add what's here. I love what Marco did with the highlight, and then take a fresh one, and be like, <clears throat> and not lose the data. Cool. Sounds great. Uh, okay. So. We'll just do all the ones that are answered, even if they're not in the dotted line. So which decisions does the DAO control? Uh, do you want to dive into that, Lily? Yeah, so if we're aligning on this DAO initially being for the development of Giveth 2, then I envision proposals, bounties, and the acceptance of new features. So the way I imagine that working is like you'd propose and you'd say, hey, I want to I build this feature. Here's my idea for it. Here's how much funding I think will be required for, uh, for all the work that's necessary for it. And Basically, uh, once that gets passed, then we'd create the bounty and say, okay, so here's the feature that the, that the Giveth DAO uh, voted on approving, and uh, here's the, the, all the details and the reward for whoever um, you know, fulfills this, these requirements. Uh, I think you're going a little too deep on this. We're okay. going to have to keep it short if we're going to... Oh, yeah, make it okay, easier. cool. So that's, and then, yeah, and then basically people submit the, the work, and it gets accepted, and the rewards get paid out. So there's, uh, and, and in broader, so there's proposals, bounties, um, maybe what else does it control? Like just in like a, a sentence for each one. So um, you, I think you added the, the GitHub, which I think is a great idea. So before anything gets merged, maybe it needs to go through those new features need to get approved. Um, another thing, the 501c3, so if you guys have heard of the, the LAO, uh, it's like an LLC that uh, instead of having officers, it has a DAO that controls the, the decisions. So potentially, the, if, we, if we had a 501c3 organization and could have tax-deductible donations, the DAO could ideally uh, govern that so we could have a decentralized nonprofit. And then the last one is, yeah. what's that? Nice, nice. Nice. And then the next one, giveth tokenomics. Um, so if we were to have a token um, and we were to be doing things like buybacks and stuff, for instance, um, I think that that would be a great uh, thing for the DAO to control as well. And then I just, that's when I had the idea for, oh, maybe this should be called the Giveth Foundation. <laughs> and uh, I want to throw down some things that Marco put over here too about the, like, 
some of the parameters within the give it dap potentially like if we need to kick someone off or uh, if someone has a DAC campaign monitoring the give dap um, accepting funds from you know people like some governance decisions around like should we take corporate sponsorship uh, totally that was that was in one of these things I love that and but, but specific definitely like changing basic functions of the DAP. Love that. Yeah, and, uh, okay. and hold, holding the donations for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, holding, holding funds. Uh, does anyone else have anything on that? Okay, we're moving quick. Uh, what problem do you seek to solve by deploying as a DAP? Anyone write this one? Well, I think it's pretty it's pretty solid. Yeah, it's good. This one is really good. Yeah. Transparent and accountable capital capital allocation of the giveth funds for public goods of the giveth ecosystem. It's pretty it's pretty solid. Uh, okay. How would the world ecosystem project uh, change if this DAO is successful? Man, this is beautifully written. Whoever wrote this. I think you wrote that first that first bullet point, right? Oh, did I? Well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the give that will be beautiful, and eventually the category came for charity, for mutual aid and so social good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ideally, uh, ideally, instead of just relying on people to be good and solve these problems um, and, and falling subject to the tragedy of the commons that holds a lot of charities back, we could instead be incentivizing social good. I think that would be really powerful. Um, it should be easier to donate. And by doing that, it should be more efficient, more social. And when you do stuff like that, you get, you get more donations. Just like more people use Uber, like six times more rides than when it was just taxis because it was easier and more accessible. More people watch stuff on Netflix because they made it easier and more accessible than when it was just Blockbuster. Um, yeah. So raising funds would be much easier for projects. You don't, you, ideally, you could be raising funds in minutes for a project without having to go through all the regulatory and compliant stuff that's currently required. And then, yeah, volunteering. Which I, I, I envision it being as easy as just like, you're like, oh, you want to go on a date or you want to do something fun this weekend? It's like, oh, why don't I go plant some trees and earn some money and then show on my social profile all my friends I can brag about the good I did this weekend. And then ideally, donations go, would be going more efficiently to the best projects as opposed to a lot of the donations going to inferior projects. Uh, the, the best projects would rise to the top and get the most donations. Which seems like a pretty cool world. I would want to live in that world. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then name our DAO. Uh, uh, let's just go, everybody say which their favorite one is on this list. Or if it's not on the list, say what their favorite one is. Uh, I'll start. Uh, I kind of like Give Us Foundation. I'll pass it to Lorelai. Uh, yeah, I don't feel like I have enough. Um, and it, I, I don't know. I, we didn't have enough of a lunar list, really, for that one, but I'm down with Give Us Foundation. <laughs> what, where, where were the other options? Oh, they're, they're up here in Name Your Dad now. In the mural or in the doc? In the Miro. And by the way, guys, we, where the Miro, Miro has also voting. So I'm setting up for oh, yeah. the voting. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. So we what get, cool OK, so I, I'm going to give you, I think if I can do that, uh, operations okay. three dot votes per person. Uh, for 30 seconds, you can vote all three on one name or on um, individuals. So vote for, uh, let's start voting. I think this will work. Let me know if you see that. Yeah, see it. Um, Okay, I think if you you just click on some. Okay. Oh, uh, but uh, they're not. I think it's. It's got to be its own text box. They're, they're each they're the whole text box. We're just voting on the whole. Can text you box. vote? It doesn't. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. So I we should. If you drew some dots one. next to them. All right. Okay. You, let's if, then quit this one. If okay. We, and I'm gonna end this. Okay. Cool. But we can. I think that's a great idea. Let's let's do the voting. Uh, I see. This is things Oops. I've never really used mural like this. This is awesome. So who? Uh, well, if someone, someone is will, editing it, yeah. uh, I'll I'll let someone else take it, and we'll move on to the next one, and we vote on yeah, that. Yeah. All right. Cool. cool. 
Cool. Uh, who, who are you taking it, Marco? Yep. Thanks, Marco. Uh, so let's go to community. Looks like, well, we kind of already did the project backstory. So I think we can skip that. And let's do uh, top three expected principles of this organization. So I, I'll let Willie read it because he wrote these. And uh, you, you recommended Wikipedia, or was that Elon who recommended Wikipedia's principles? I don't remember. So somebody recommended Wikipedia's principles, and I thought they were great. And that's where I got the first two. So um, they have one, give a success as a function of the open community, do the right thing. I just added to that, do the right thing and get rewarded for it. And then uh, one of the others, just meritocratic. So, um, you know, it's a crowd, but it's not just a democracy. And if you if you are a top contributor and you get a lot of upvotes and you have a big impact, um, your your votes could be could be worth more. But open to, to discussion on that. Um, newcomers are always welcomed. Uh, that was Wikipedia's. I did an alternative take on it, just freedom, freedom for all to join, donate, raise funds, contribute, share ideas. And then um, third, our hands are invisible. So we make the decisions on, with the goal of maximizing information, competition, and transparency. And we, we avoid decisions that stand in the way of any of those three principles. Nice. Does freedom for all to join uh, sound a little scary to anyone else? Or is that just me? I mean, what if we have some nasty people coming on here? Or something? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a risk. Uh, that's why we have a direct governance and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, we should welcome everyone. I think most people yeah, are good. I, I like to think most people are good. Yeah. Yeah, because, exactly, yeah. What we came up with in Giveth is that, hey, anyone can use our smart contracts and deploy uh, whatever they want. If they want to crowdfund for something crazy that we don't, uh, that we find immoral, we can take them off our front end. They can still raise funds. I mean, we're building permissionless uh, tech, but that doesn't mean that we have to promote their uh, promote their product. But we're talking about members of the DAO, right? Not, um, this not is, users. Oh, that's a good point. I was thinking well, more of give it to principles principles of the of the org. So, I mean, I do think that there is a value in curation, and that it's like yes, newcomers are welcome, but there's an onboarding stream. And an onboarding stream. Mm -hmm. Wait, so, are we talking about users of the platform or members of the DAO? I mean, I think both. I was thinking about like users of the platform, which we probably like should. This is I know this is the DAO canvas, so it's a good point, Lorelai, and also a good point, Griff, Griff, that maybe it is maybe it is both in that sense. Yeah, but so uh, if, who is the community? Community is everyone who's participating, everyone who's using the DAO, right? So that's the community. Yeah. So I get. Yeah, but get that's the thing. User. Like, if this is the Giveth Foundation, like it doesn't have all of the users of the platform. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but if someone really wanted to join this DAO, the Dev DAO, and they worked hard to contribute, like even if they're not a Dev, they're just writing comments on code or something, you know, or they're, uh, sorry, writing documentation. Uh, I think that they would be welcomed and that we would give them tokens, right? I think you're right when you put it like that. And you know, we talked about earlier, maybe they maybe they get fired if they're if they're bad actors or if they're super annoying. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but otherwise I think everyone should at least have the opportunity to to join and contribute. Well this is the same uh, like the same implications come up in the question about how do people exit the DAO. Um, and I mean, I always think of both uh, onboarding and offboarding as something that's initiated more by principles than by people, you know? And like, if there's certain principles or like guidelines of behavior that are agreed to, then basically someone can, anyone can enter. And then as long as they behave that way, um, they can remain inside the organization, and then at the point when they start behaving outside of those guidelines, and they exit the DAO. It, it's in, a great in idea. In the interest of time, I think that we should just star this and say we need to do more work on our principles and move on. Uh, because I, I do think, uh, I think we could probably have a session on just values, principles, and, and this kind of things. I like that. Uh, I like the idea for so, for community standards too that you were just saying, Lorelai, and that could be another cool thing that the DAO man manages. The DAO defines those community standards. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so communication platforms, Discord, Notion forum. Who is this? Oh yeah, who added forum? I like that. Marco, yeah, oh, I like I like that idea. I that. Discord's good, but it's not the best. A forum could be better for some of these discussions. It's I really wish that Discord had threads. Uh, I forgot what's wrong. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, yeah, a for forum is a, yeah, a standard way right now, so I guess we could use that one. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope we join someone else's forum, personally. And just like add okay. value to them and, and let them add value to us. Cool. But I do think a forum would be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Who is responsible? Willie and Griff. <laughs> Son, I just put it. I just, I just I couldn't think of anyone else. Sorry. I, it's, uh, we can change it and we should probably change it. We should split the responsibilities, obviously. Yeah. I would put Elon on there a little bit too. He seems to be, uh, a, a, for the DAO especially. He seems to be kind of responsible. I think everyone on this call, I mean, yeah, be or not. I mean, uh, uh, and, and the member journey looks so really I good too. My, what's the what's the uh, member I journey? Point around the dock, so. mm. We need to think about a member journey. Uh, I mean, there's not enough space here in this small box to put everything and describe the onboarding because, they, like, you know, how do we onboard people um, to this DAO? I guess, like, I don't know. I mean, as as soon as you start contributing or as soon as you start participating in, in the community, you're, you kind of get onboarded, but we should probably have some documents or some, like, you know, on the forum, like start here or something like that, um, to onboard people and then um, to retain their engagement. I don't know. Um, as, as already written in the document, like um, rewarding, incentivized contribution, so stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I imagine as a dev DAO, we'll want to have some kind of get. GitHub contributor uh, code of conduct, uh, onboarding, like uh, I don't know, like agreement or whatever that they that is pretty common for a repo, and then uh, people can just start contributing uh, on GitHub. It's probably an onboarding patch. Although eventually, I would love to see a, a bonding curve, you know, where people can just buy in and support us, and that also be another way to onboard into the DAO. Uh, source cred stuff. Oh man, love yeah, would love a source cred. Uh, uh, here. Source cred. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, oh yeah, communities, rhythms, and rituals. Weekly calls. Free standard. And then. Uh, yeah, weekly, oh. monthly. Um, Yeah, I, I definitely like the idea of a monthly call for this DAO. Cool. Mm -hmm. It's like DAO focus. Let's do a monthly rather than a weekly. Cool. And we have the weekly community because, calls for Give It. Yeah, so too. we could have like a, yeah. Yeah, I think adding a, week, a monthly call that's DAO focused will be good, especially for at least the route I was taking the governance elements. Uh, which I hope to just, I, we got a cruise, so I'm trying to cruise. Um, sure, sure. Uh, so on the government side, uh, I I saw the, well, I didn't actually prioritize, but I see the priority being more about like how many DAO contributors return and how many GitHub commits and like additions to the code is happening. Um, but like, what I've seen is that people who, like if this is a dev DAO, what's important is that people, the biggest key performance indicator is that people stay engaged uh, and that they return. Like one person making a GitHub commit and leaving, is that shows something, that, that was an opportunity missed. And so that's, that's the biggest thing. 
I actually think uh, ideally the less proposals that we need to pass, in some ways, the better. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so yeah, and I like this uh, self-reporting and milestones that someone added there. That's really nice. Uh, in some ways, the more milestones that come out of this, like the more we use the DAP ourselves, shows that is uh, that that's probably a, a good a good performance indicator. Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone else have KPIs they want to talk about? Or how do you measure a number of return contributors? Uh, basically, if, if from the dev down perspective, if someone makes like takes on a bounty, you know, and then does it, and then they want to take on another bounty, and then another. You can just, ch you, we can measure it on GitHub. Okay. Uh, although not everything's on GitHub, like Marco's doing work in Figma, you know, and this is why I added hours of work being done, which isn't really great. I don't like the hours, you know, but like, it's a, uh, it's kind of this, not everything's on GitHub. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> but that's why I like the self-reporting part because uh, I mean that's where I, I I take notes for what week or whatever, so I can just like check it out. Whatever comes, so it's I think it's a great thing. Yeah, and, that's and by the way, Figma is also open to everyone, so you can just yeah. Awesome. Yeah, source cred would be really interesting uh, to to do for this kind of thing. Uh, we'll talk. I, I hope we get a chance to dive into that sometime. Uh, but let's let's keep pushing. Uh, reflect on governance polarities. So I did this one. It's like we're starting pretty global, and I think that we're going to get more global as the DAO builds. Uh, and I think we're starting off pretty centralized. It's mostly Willie and, and a little bit of, I'm pretty influential. Uh, and then uh, it's kind of, the rest, it's kind of a duocracy. But then it will be, it will get more decentralized when it's bigger. And I think right now we're pretty independent as far as like, uh, we can do anything we want with the future of this DAO or with this DAO right now. But eventually this DAO is going to start being relied on to do the things that it needs to do. And people are going to have expectations on the DAO and performing certain actions. And so we'll actually lose some agency just in that. And then uh, common proposals. So for so, that for that one, Griff, would it be a, the would we be more on the dependent side and then going towards being independent? Is it saying like I, well, I'm I'm just getting a little confused with how one's phrased. I want to make sure we have the arrow pointing in the right direction. You could be right. Yeah. I, I was I was a, I was curious about this question too. I actually, that's why I asked Felipe about it. And it was like, you know, do people control the future of the organization? Right now, we can really do anything we want with this DAO. I see. We can just we can do we can just say actually, you know what? We're starting a strip club with this DAO. It's happening. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but no, actually, uh, when this DAO becomes owner of the Give It platform it would be very irresponsible for us to try to pull some kind of side business off or, you know, uh, well, and we can't just, it, it would, I mean, technically it could just like drop the give it that all together, but people will have expectations of what it's doing. The constitution won't be as flexible um, and it'll be harder to change when more people come in. Cool. Cool. And fortunately we had the, sounds like we had the, author of this canvas on the call and we were able to get clarity. So thanks for that explanation. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that question, honestly. I'm right. going to give them feedback on it. Yeah, that's some good feedback. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Uh, okay, common principles. So what are the decisions this DAO takes on a daily basis that are not considered critical? So when I read this question, I saw two different things. So there's like the community doing stuff and then there's the DAO voting. And I hope to, I hope that the DAO doesn't have any daily decisions to make. In fact, ideally, it's like the decisions that it has to make, most of them are done very soft. And it's more like ratifying soft governance when it's needed, you know, and defining what uh, that is and maybe doing it once a month. 
right? So like trying to group all the stuff that's happening and go into like a ratifying call. And before that, there was a lot of advice process and there was soft governance happening where people are informed that this is going to happen. And then monthly, it's like, a, oh, yeah, hey, click the buttons. You know, they're all unanimous because they've all been debated and they're just happened. Love it. Right. Totally. Reminds me of like just like a traditional organization and a board or something. It's like you go to the board and you present your plans for the next like quarter and you go back and you just knock it out. You're not, you're not going back to the board every day and doing new votes and everything. Yeah. Uh, and I loved, I think it was you, Marco, who added this, all this stuff in critical proposals. That was me. Oh, is you, Lorelai? I love it. It was great. Do you want to talk about it? Oh, I was just, I think I was thinking along the same lines as you where uh, it's like this, this DAO shouldn't, if this is the foundation, it shouldn't have to deal with any really menial decisions that should only be really like guiding impactful choices so yeah like significant changes to to how the service functions um like yeah like making um making the financial structure mandatory as far as like, like making the business plan mandatory uh donations to give us or like changing like the vetoes or the ability to veto or like the you know what power reviewers have if reviewers are mandatory those types of things or um, or like going closed source obviously that'll be a huge um, a huge decision um, so yeah yeah and the only thing I added was uh, monthly budget I. I and I think monthly is the right space and time from what I've seen in the blockchain space to be able to decide a budget for a month and then, you know, have the occasional like, oh, hey, we need like a little extra money for this bounty we didn't see happening. Uh, okay, well, if there's any other critical th things, uh, guys, definitely write it down. You know, uh, while we're going through this, feel free to add things uh, that are lost. The next one is a uh, legal strategy. So uh, I think in the short term, we don't need to have a legal entity. Giveth has never had a legal entity. But in the, lo in the long run, if we ever launch this thing and open it to the public, we have to have a legal entity in place. Otherwise, it would be ir irresponsible uh, in general. So uh, I really like uh, Willie's idea of trying to pull off a 501c3 uh, to some extent for an open source uh, community uh, that in it in uh, trying to connect it to the Lao and going that route sounds really cool. Uh, and then the other option, if we launch a little faster than that is, we could just kind of pick someone to be our legal shield uh, and just say, "Hey, all the devs who are working on this, uh, they actually work for that legal entity." And then, and then like, okay, no one's going to get in trouble uh, and. Uh, in case like something unforeseen happens uh, while we set up the actual 501c3 LAO or, or whatever. Um, okay, if there's a, anybody else, uh, Willie, you, you seemed like you had something to say on that, so. Oh no, I was just nodding my head in agreement with everything you said. Looks good okay. to me. Uh, okay, well, yeah, I see someone scrolling around voting for down name, should we vote? Is I don't know where the names went. He moved them to this bottom corner where all the people's cursors are. Oh. Like a, we're all having a little dance out here. Okay. <laughs> uh, how do, well, I think how it's do we vote? Hold on, no, no, no. no. I, I just, I just, uh, I just figured that the, the previous session was still on, so I'm gonna start. One. Because I never created a working session in Metro, I used Mural before, so let's just create a new one and see how that goes. Okay, so uh, voting on the on DAO name. So we got, let's say, five minutes, uh, even though we won't need that much. Uh, three votes per person. Voting on a whole area, no. Uh, let's vote here. 
Okay, done. Uh, vote for text shapes. Da, 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 da. All right. Okay, start voting. Mm. Oh, we're missing the the other side of it. The before we get done. Ah, damn. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, 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 I need to, I need to ask something. Hold on a second. It may make you highlight the whole element to get it in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. How do I do that? Uh, I guess I need to, I need to end voting again. Hold on. Sorry, guys. It's okay. Let's try another one. Delete, create new voting. <laughs> okay, five minutes, three votes. Let's do voting in this area here. Done. Start voting. Vote now. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's working now? Yep. Monday. Oh. I mean, camera should be all but Can I put three votes in one thing, or is that immoral? Yeah, yeah, you can put three votes. Yes, you can put three votes in one thing. You can, yeah. I'm not, I'm not able to vote right this time around for some reason. No, really? What? I, I didn't what get happens? the the invite um, to vote like I did in the the last couple times. But it's okay. Uh, weird. No, it's not okay. I'll stay. I'll, st I'll abstain from this vote. Yeah. <laughs> you can. If it, hey, if it, if it's close, you can be the tiebreaker. Okay. Cool. That sounds good. <laughs> In fact, you can be a swing vote. <laughs> Guess what? It's, did, it's... did everyone cast their vote? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Can we end the voting now? Yeah. Spirits. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool. Okay, so processing the results. Please wait. Wow. Okay, we got this. five for Give It and four for the Give It Foundation. Awesome. Really? Uh -huh. There's a swing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Willie, there's, there's room for swing in here. Ooh. I really, I do really like <laughs> Giveth Foundation. I think it could be more clear if we had the Giveth Foundation and then the Giveth DAP, um, kind of as separate things. Um, so I do uh, like Giveth Foundation. Okay, swing vote is applied. Um, and I cast all three of my votes for it. <laughs> okay. We're at it, five. It wasn't even, it wasn't even close. <laughs> One note on that, though, like, doesn't that a little bit depend on the legal structure that we choose to have, or can you call yourself the foundation, like, no matter what? I think, I mean, we could say it's foundational, right? We could just, it's Fa like a, foundation with a Z somewhere in there? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good this question. Is the found, this is the foundation of the Giveth Dap. This is what we're built off of. Okay. Cool. It's not a legal foundation. It's like a concrete and rebar. A base <laughs> <laughs> Uh Okay, so 13 minutes. Right, before the devs like to hang out anyways. <laughs> right. Close credits. So since there's only 13 minutes left, I'm going to only do the dotted boxes, but it looks like there was some beautiful stuff written in the next one for stakeholder analysis. I'm sorry, then we're gonna cruise through it. Uh, okay, so from the user's point of view, what is the DAO's primary objective? Who did, who did this one? Uh, I threw those in there. Um, yeah, so I, I put two for both. So for users, the Giveth Foundation is governs the development of Giveth 2.0, and for Giveth 2.0, it's it's the future of giving. Nice. And then uh, the persona. Uh, I think this was you, right, Lorelai? Yeah. Um... Yeah, so what connects the different user personas? What do they have in common? Um, a desire to distribute their resources in a meaningful way, um, whether those are like 
work hours or funds. Um, they value transparency and accountability and, and possibly like have a you know shared experience in the past of like being burned by traditional charity or just like being uh, disillusioned with it. Um, and then possibly they, I hope it moves into serving these people, uh, people who are limited by the traditional financial world, whether it's because they're unbanked um, due to like extreme poverty or also just being like excluded from from financial services because of like whatever, you know, they're an immigrant or they're like, they're part of an organization that's like opposing the government, uh, challenging things, whatever. Love and I'm it. sure there's more. That's just my little brainstorm. That's nice. That's great. Uh, okay, well, let's keep pushing. Uh, and then, uh, well, there is a comment on this one. Uh, Marco said, what about supporters for donors? And I, I also commented, uh, I like givers. Uh, mm -hmm. I like uh, givers. I kind of like givers for both. But uh, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see how it's, it's confusing if you call them both givers, I think. Yeah, we can, yeah. It's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> it's definitely worth thinking about. Yeah. We and we have okay. talked about the yeah, how donors are such a crucial piece of it. Like, if we can get the donors, we can get the other pieces. So, like, so I do think it's beneficial. I I, I hear what you guys are saying that it's not just donations that we want to attract there, but at the end of the day, donations will be a crucial piece of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how can users leverage participation for individual benefit? So yeah, so. Uh, Based on Felipe's advice, members are economically incentivized to contribute. Um, and and I, thought, I saw your comment earlier too, Lorelai, so not just economically, obviously, like socially incentivized, I think, as well um, is important. But at the end of the day, I think it's incentives are powerful and if we should, um, and there's, it makes sense. If you're contributing, if you're doing good, you should be rewarded and it should be in your best self-interest to, to contribute. Um, and so initially that'll be focused on the Give It To development, but eventually all contributions on Give It To should be rewarded. Um, even just posting ideas that get upvotes, for instance, yeah. or voting, like you said earlier. Good, good. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. And this is also something to do with source cred. Uh, but like in the original Give It Dap, every time you donated, you got a token. Token didn't have any value, but you know, you got something because you gave something, and it was like a nice thing. Uh, we took that out of scope, but uh, you know, I'm glad to hear that it seems like it might be back into scope. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Actors. Actors. Uh, so ideal proposal types, brainstorm. Who took this one on? Uh, I put something uh, for the stars, not someone continued. I added some stuff in there also. I wasn't too sure what I was adding was correct, but the most more uncertain I was, the more question marks I put on the end. <laughs> I was I was a little confused by this one too, and, and added just a bit. So, so yeah. So these are. So I'm confused. So, so it basically, yeah, it's asked, it's, it's, go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. It says here uh, these types will help uh, determine who gets the reps and how. So I guess we we already said it. All contributions will be rewarded, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So no, go ahead, sir. No, yeah, so I, th there's that part, like, these should be things that reward you, all these proposals, I guess, but also I see now it's, like, the ideal proposal type, so, like, and that kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about, like, proposals for features or for critical decisions, um, and I like the other ones here, too, like, dispute arbitration, like, that can make sense, um, creation of the DAO members, so um, accepting and kicking people out of the DAO, that all, that all makes sense. So maybe, and I wrote like voting on proposals that probably does not make sense there anymore, because that voting on proposal is not a, should not be a proposal. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and I'll just change this one to, to bounties, I guess. Yeah, and budgets, you know, in bounties. general, I think budgets. Yeah. Uh, and who are the funders and why? 
I think I just put donors for now. <laughs> um, eventually, hopefully, we can find a cool crypto economic solution. But, Let's uh, add that. Yeah. And like the big thing right now is Gitcoin, I think, uh, for the next, for the in, at least for the next couple of months, that'll probably be our next big fundraise, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, Dow Stack has expressed interest too, and this is this is all good stuff that will help us fill out their request for funding. Oh yeah, grants mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. Dow Stack and other other corporate. Things. Mm -hmm. so that's good. Okay. Well, we made it. We made it through. Um, wow. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And I don't know if you guys saw the nice little thing that uh, that Felipe drew over here. Fund all the things. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um. So yeah. Well, thank you guys. This is a good call. I. I I think next steps are really to take this on as a as a project to make it a little clearer. I don't know. Does anyone feel feel good about that? Uh, I mean, does anyone else have any other ne next steps that we want to add to our our to do list here? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think this was such a good session that I don't know if anyone would be interested in watching this, but as we start to share with what we're doing with the world and stuff, I wonder, I'd be open to just even just post. I mean, obviously, I think people should be able to come come see what happened here. Um, so maybe a next step is like posting the this recording. Just an idea, though. Oh, yeah. No, great point. We should absolutely post the recording, and then we can put it on the Giveth uh, YouTube. I can even just give you access to the Giveth YouTube, Willie. Uh, Woo. We have like a account. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. uh, we used to. I can't wait to watch these strip club videos. So. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be wild, dude. Uh, no, but uh, we'll. Okay, I would love if, if. Does anyone feel up to trying to take this what we have and actually make it into uh, like something a little cleaner? Because I. I what if we what if we uh, had an incentive for this in, in the Dow? Yeah, where if you did this, maybe you get some of the, that funding we have saved up. Yeah, I like a bounty on it because it's a lot of work yeah. to complete the Dow canvas and chase it down. Griff, what do you think would be a good reward for um, a project like this? Well, I guess it depends on what the scope is. If the scope is to get a question and answer for every question and then have it like checked off by somebody. Uh, I, I think uh, at least in ether, honestly, because yeah. it'll be a lot of work and it's not something that I'll ask, like to do a really good job at completing our DAO canvas to the point where it's something we would want to publish and say, hey, this is our DAO. It will be in that like, you know, chasing you or me or someone down to say, yeah, I think that sounds good for every box, at least in ether. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, what you Griff mentioned, so I think we should uh, open this up to the community, their thoughts, what they think about it, um, comment on that, whatever, and then we all go back and do another session to to revise everything and uh, finalize and and then share it again or whatever, and then say okay, this is the final one. After which we can then take the canvas, um, clean it up um, in whatever format or way or document in the notion or whatever we want, right? Uh, but I, I think it, we need at least one more session after we get some more feedback and comments from the community. Yeah, that's really wise, Marco. I love that. Yeah. So maybe we take this, uh, I try to figure out, I'll take on the task of trying to figure out how to rename it. <laughs> um, yeah, I was trying and, to do that all, the whole time. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. It might be that Felipe is the only one with the power to rename it. Well, maybe we have to copy it. Uh, you know what? Yeah, you have to copy it. So uh, this is what you do. You just duplicate the same board uh, to whatever, and then show us again with the new link. I think everything will remain the same. Delete everything or what's on the, or I can clean it up and I can rename it. Just show me the link. I can do that. Okay. 
Oh, that would be amazing, Marco. That would be amazing. Uh, and then, uh, and so then, yeah, clean it up, rename it, and then, um, and maybe just make it so there's only two boards, one that's empty. Yeah, yeah, empty. exactly. Yeah, and then, and then we just tweet it, tell people, hey, please come comment on our give it to Dapdow, and maybe we give a little bit of an explainer that before people like think it's something it's not, uh, and then get community feedback, and maybe we talk about it. Uh, a week from now, like not this next meeting, but this Sunday, the meeting after. That sounds great but, to me. So it sounds like Mark, sure. Mark, Mark is going to take on cleaning up, and then it's our jobs to promote it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. That sounds Thanks, great. Marco. And Marco, you're such a big contributor. I think we should, I don't want you to be just doing this all for free. So I think one ether, I think, for that task, I think even is is would be... Um, Don't just, worry about that for now. Okay, let's just do the work, and then good, we figure that good, out later. Good luck, Willie. Good luck. <laughs> I have, uh, I can tell Marco is, is is so altruistic and does not want to get paid for this stuff. But okay, well, <laughs> we can take it. To, give it to story is a constant refusal of Marco to, to take money. <laughs> We're gonna find a way. I'm gonna get your ETH address, Marco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, okay, 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 okay. We agree on the next steps. Uh, awesome, awesome. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, Finishing right on time? Yeah. Thank you all so thank much. You. This is the most fun I've had in, in years. Yeah. Years, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's been years now since before the virus started. <laughs> yeah, at least it feels like years. So. <laughs> okay. Good night, Thanks guys. Thanks for having me uh, sit in on the podcast. Bye. Thank you. Thank you Bye. all. Have a great weekend. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. 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 That's great. That's a great experience. Bye. Glad you enjoyed it, Hadi. I'll see you soon. Okay, okay. That's a great experience. That's something beautiful. Uh, make step by step by a group of uh, enthusiastic people. That's a great experience for me. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Completely agree. See ya. Bye, Hadi. Bye, Griff. Bye. Have a great weekend, dude. Much love to everybody.